Welcome back. We're thankful for Attorney General candidates Josh Call and Eric Tony joining us for this entire half hour. Good to see both of you. Let's move on to the state's abortion law and the 1849 abortion plan. Mr. Call, you've pledged not to devote any Department of Justice resources to enforcing the current law or, or investigating. To critics, why do you get to pick and choose which laws to enforce? You know, Matt, um, about three and a half months ago, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned a precedent that had stood for almost 50 years, and it took a right away from the American people. And in Wisconsin, we have this draconian 1849 ban that was never repealed. That ban has no exceptions for cases involving rape or incest. Even to protect the health of the mother, uh, abortions are only permitted if it's necessary to save the life of the mother. And we have begun to hear some truly terrible stories about the way that Wisconsin's ban and other states' ban are impacting people. We can't to have that in Wisconsin. Law, and we need to make sure that we are fighting to prevent this ban from stopping people to get access to the care that they need. Now, as Attorney General, I uh, oversee the investigation and prosecution of the most serious crimes in the state. To divert resources from that to going after people for abortions would be a huge misuse of resources. But that's what my opponent would do. He's made clear that he is eager to enforce that abortion ban, and he won't even rule out prosecutions in cases involving rape or incest. Women in Wisconsin deserve better than that. Would you commit Justice Department resources if the state's 1849 ban and law stays in effect? What I've, we enforce the rule of law. When I do jury trials, I ask every juror, do you agree to follow the law as the judge instructs you? And they all raise their hand and say, I will. I ask a follow-up question. Is there anybody here that wouldn't follow the law simply because you disagree? None of them raised their hand. But that's exactly what our attorney general is doing. He's raising his hand and saying he's not going to follow the law because he disagrees with it. I don't just follow the law when I agree with it. And I've committed that if the governor signs exceptions for rape and incest, I will defend it because that's what we expect our attorney general to do. I've sat across as a district attorney for 10 years now, the president of our Wisconsin District Attorneys Association, from survivors of sexual assault and prosecuted those animals that have committed those heinous crimes. And I've seen that that pain doesn't go away after three months, 12 months, two years, five years. We need to make sure those survivors are supported, that they have those resources. And we talk about resources. Our attorney general has deprived us of those resources of DCI agents and prosecutor positions. And he refuses to answer the question about internet crimes against children if they've been over a thousand of those referrals backlogged at some point this year or more. Those are questions that people of Wisconsin want to know and to ensure that there's consistency and predictability in the law that an attorney general will enforce the law, not just when they agree. And that's my record as the district attorney of Fond du Lac County, enforcing the rule of law, even if I don't agree. And that's what we expect from leaders in our state. And I would question the attorney general. Is he going to criticize Governor Tony Evers, who said he will not sign a ban that would, excuse me, create exceptions for rape and incest that the governor has said he will not sign it? Does the attorney general think he should sign it? Well, first, uh, what you basically yes heard no from question. Mr. Tony is that he will be using DOJ resources, which go to investigating and prosecuting the most serious crimes, to go after people for abortions, including in cases of rape or incest. And he talked about survivors of sexual assault. He's saying that he's going to help ensure that they are forced to have a child against their will. Is that a fair Wisconsin accusation? women deserve no. better. What, I, what I've said repeatedly, we have great district attorneys and prosecutors across Wisconsin, and we use our discretion, and we take things on a case-by-case -case basis. Let me ask you about elections. Attorney generals in various forms have become intertwined in President, former President Trump's push to decertify results in certain states or investigate certain cases of voter fraud in certain cases. Broadly speaking, what is the role of an attorney general in future elections, Mr. Cole? Well, first, I think it's critical that our attorney generals stand up for the will of the voters. I did that after the 2020 election when the results were challenged and we successfully defended the results in Wisconsin. What we've heard from Mr. Tony is that he would try to use the Department of Justice to serve partisan ends. You just heard about him prosecuting people potentially or investigating people for abortions. Um, he also would go after people um, for, based on bogus claims of election fraud. He supported Michael Gableman's waste of over a million dollars of taxpayer money. He just appeared with him at a fundraiser. He said that our election commissioners committed crimes and should be removed from office. So he's been fanning the flames of the big lie. That is the last thing we need from our state's 
top law enforcement officer. M Mr. Tony, what is the role of an attorney general? I'm, I'm curious where our attorney general has been if he's paid attention because I've been the most vocal Republican statewide candidate opposed to decertification saying there was no widespread voter fraud that would over overturn the results of the election here in Wisconsin. But I am prosecuting voter fraud and the attorney general apparently hasn't even read his own handbook on election fraud which says people cannot illegally register and use a place to vote as a P.O. box. We had people, we convicted somebody in Fond du Lac County that voted through a P.O. box location that didn't even live in Fond du Lac County. Our attorney general apparently thinks that's okay for somebody to go to a different county and vote for people that they don't, that don't even represent them. That's from his own handbook. And so our attorney general also supported the 2016 special counsel investigation, which found no collusion in that election. And he was representing Hillary Clinton in the presidential recount here in Wisconsin, arguing for a hand recount where he said that humans could better tell the intent of voters than machines. I've stood up on these issues to defend our democracy and the integrity of our elections. And when we look at the Wisconsin Election Commission, it's clear they exceeded their lawful authority because they gave out directives on not dispatching special voting deputies and chapter five does not allow the Wisconsin Election Commission to give directives. They can give guidance, formal or informal. What they may have been able to say was if clerks did not dispatch special voting deputies, those ballots may still be able to be counted because the language would be directory, but that's not what they did. They directed that they not be dispatched based on CDC guidance for August and November of 2020. Okay, you know, Mr. Tony didn't answer your question, but um, what we've seen from, from him is, again, embracing Michael Gableman. Um, I think what he was referring to is cases where he charged people who lived in Fond du Lac County um, but used a UPS box Have you read and he charged complaints? them with felonies. Um, but we need an AG who's going to stand up and protect the will of the voters, defend our voting rights. That's what my record is. Uh, Mr. Tony has provided no suggestions for what the AG should have, do. Have you read the criminal complaints? Yes or no? Mr. Tony, the, the question was about what the AG he should do. He hasn't read the criminal complaints, and he's now but talking he's speaking about, his record. about the cases in which he doesn't even know the facts. And you know, that's we what need we... To take a quick pause. We need to take a quick pause. We'll continue this conversation on the other side of the break. Up next, more of our conversation with the Attorney General candidates.